Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to leave our beautiful planet Earth and go on a little adventure approximately 3 million light years away from our planet to a galaxy known as Triangulum. Today you're going to learn everything we know about this galaxy, and welcome to What The Math. And so without further ado, let's actually leave our planet Earth and go for a little adventure to uh, the third biggest galaxy in our local cluster. Now, the most famous galaxy that is not Milky Way is Andromeda. You've all probably heard about it. You've all probably maybe even seen it in the skies. It's very uh, visible if you are in a, in a location that has very dark skies. And it's basically the largest object that we have um, in our dark skies. And at the same time, one of the farthest objects you can see. I'm going to show you where it is located in Space Engine by basically leaving our galaxy, the Milky Way, pointing at Earth by doing the following. So there's Earth right there. And now we're going to look for Andromeda. And so if I just turn a little bit to the left here, you'll notice that right there, there is an object that seems to be galactic in shape, and that's Andromeda. But today we're going to be talking about the third large galaxy in our local group of galaxies that has about 60 various galaxies to begin with. This object is right here and it's known as Triangulum. It's kind of in the same direction as the Andromeda galaxy, but it is significantly smaller. So as a matter of fact, if I actually use my binocular function here, so there is the Andromeda galaxy. This is what it looks like. And there is the Triangulum. Now, what is so interesting about Triangulum? Well, first of all, it's, it's not as well known. As a matter of fact, if you're a gamer, you might have actually only heard about it once. It only appeared in one game I can think of, in the game Crisis that came out in 2007. The aliens were actually from this galaxy right here. The Seth were from, um, from Triangulum. But that's the only reference I actually can think of to this galaxy and it's it's not uh, it's not that we don't think it's important it's actually just as important as andromeda but for some reason it's not as popular anyway we're going to go to it right now and we're going to explore it in a little bit more detail starting with its structure so this is about 2.8 million light years away from us in other words the light from this galaxy takes about 2.8 million light years to reach us in terms of size it's about only maybe 40% of mass of the Milky Way. And it only has about 40 billion stars compared to about 400 billion in our own galaxy. Its diameter from end to end is about 60,000 light years. So this is about half of what our own Milky Way is. And um, in terms of the actual visible mass versus dark matter, um, about 20% is so-called bariatric matter. So basically visible matter. And the rest, which is about 5 times 10 to the power of 10 masses of sun, is the invisible dark matter. Now, what's interesting about this galaxy is that it is essentially a spiral galaxy similar to our own Milky Way. And similar to the Andromeda galaxy, which is right there and visible quite clearly from, uh, from a Triangulum. Um, but unlike... Milky Way, this particular galaxy is classified as just spiral galaxy without an actual bar in the middle. If I were to go back to Mil the Milky Way and to look at it from, I guess, this angle here, you could kind of see that there's actually this uh, bar-like structure in the middle uh, that actually classifies our galaxy as a bar spiral galaxy. Whereas the um, Triangle Galaxy doesn't have that, so it's, it's called just spiral galaxy without the bar part. Now, you may notice that one of the main differences between the Milky Way and this is that it has a lot more of these bright spots everywhere. And as a matter of fact, um, there's at least like 515 various really bright spots like this here and this there. So in other words, uh, nebula or supernova or possible um, 
star formation regions that are really, really prevalent in this particular galaxy. Interestingly, just from observations and comparing this to Andromeda Galaxy, we know that in this particular galaxy, there is like four times more stars that are being formed at any moment than in the Andromeda Galaxy. So even though this is actually smaller by mass, it's a lot more active in producing more stars, which is why it has these really bright spots everywhere that you can see, especially this one right here that's very, very bright, very visible, and has actually quite a lot of interesting stuff in it. Now let's actually maybe visit this for a second, just so we can see what it looks like in more detail. And this is known as NGC 604. It's a very interesting looking nebula. You can kind of see there's a bit of a cube here in its shape and it looks absolutely incredibly gorgeous. Now, what's really interesting about this galaxy is that it was actually discovered a long time ago. As a matter of fact, the first person to discover it was an Italian astronomer by the name of uh, Giovanni Hodierna. And he discovered this sometime in, in um, mid 1600s. Then about 100 years later, this was um, classified as a kind of a nebula by Charles Messier, who was the French astronomer and is famous for the Messier catalog, which is why this galaxy is no also known as M33. So if I will actually, to, if I click on the galaxy, you'll see that it's going to be listed as M33 right here. That's because it's the 33rd object that he listed in his catalog. And uh, sometimes this is also um, erroneously called the Pinwheel Galaxy, although in reality, Pinwheel Galaxy is actually something a little bit different. It's the galaxy known as M101, and it's located right around there. So that's actually the Pinwheel Galaxy, and this is the Triangulum Galaxy. And the name Triangulum uh, actually comes from the constellation where you can discover this galaxy, which is also known as Triangulum. Once again, because this used to be known as a nebula, before we identified this as a galaxy, we actually thought that this was a nebula in the constellation Triangulum. Now, there's another really cool feature that we discovered about this galaxy, and that's actually the interaction between Triangulum and the Andromeda Galaxy. We've discovered that they actually are connected to each other through various streams of uh, hydrogen, but also through a very thin pathway of stars that's kind of invisible in this game, but it is there. So there's actually a path of stars that connects them, which suggests that a long time ago, maybe two or possibly even eight billion years ago, these two galaxies came really close together and they actually interacted with, with one another. And this also means that in about two to maybe three billion years, Triangulum will once again approach Andromeda and will either get absorbed into it or possibly which is very likely, will actually get absorbed into the union of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and the Andromeda galaxy, because we know for a fact that Andromeda will one day collide with the Milky Way and will create what we sometimes call as Milkdromeda. And so maybe, just maybe, this galaxy right here, known as the Triangulum Galaxy, will actually join the union as well, and so maybe, just maybe, we'll have to call them the Milk Draw Gallum Galaxy? I don't know, maybe you have a better name? Post it in the comments below. But anyway, so yes, it's a pretty exciting galaxy. A lot of new stars are formed here, a lot of really cool things going on. And this is actually the um, location where we've discovered some really cool things. Like, for example, there, uh, one of the only objects listed in in Space Engine is known as M33X7. Now, this is actually a location for one of the most massive stars, which is what we see right here, but also a location for a very interesting binary system. This is also known as a binary X-ray variable because, and let me just maybe dim this a little bit so you can see it better, because uh, this is actually a binary object. This is a huge wolf ray star, a very, very massive star that's going to explode one day and create a tremendously powerful supernova. Very bright, very massive, and will, that will probably lead to creation of new stars. But what's orbiting around it is even more interesting. This right there is actually the biggest um, solar mass black hole we've discovered. In other words, it's the biggest small black hole we've discovered. It's about 16 masses of our own sun, 
and it orbits around this supermassive star uh, known as M33X7. And there is actually the black hole. We're going to slow down time just so you can actually see what it all looks like as it orbits around its companion, the supermassive Wolf Rayet star. Now, if you don't know what Wolf Rayet stars are, check out the video I made a few months ago about them. And uh, if you want to check out more black hole videos, they're also available for you as well. But anyway, so this is actually a very unusual object, and we don't really understand how they were formed, because both of these are super massive. This is 16 times mass of Sun, and this one is about 70 masses um, of the Sun. And we think that um, they were created together, but what probably happened was that this star must have had a humongous supernova, and this one will have an even bigger one. So both of these stars will probably create some kind of a binary black hole at the end. But anyway, so that's just one of the exciting things we discovered here. And using all of these discoveries, including this black hole and this supermassive star, and the fact that there are so many new stars that are formed in Triangle of Galaxy, this actually allows us to study the universe itself, because this is a nutshell of how things interact in the universe and how things are formed. And because this galaxy is much smaller than Andromeda and a lot more active, it's actually a really, really good opportunity for astronomers to study how things in other galaxies are actually formed and how they interact, because this is pretty close to us, it's very, very bright, it's very visible, and it has so much activity going on in there. But obviously we still have so many mysteries about this galaxy and we still haven't really discovered everything about it. And there's still so much more to find for us um, by looking and studying this incredible spiral galaxy. Now we're actually going to go and find the supermassive black hole in the middle of this galaxy. And we're going to try to do this manually. But at the same time, that's pretty much it I wanted to cover in this video. And I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what we know and what we we discovered so far and why this particular galaxy is definitely worth more time to study. Now I wonder if this supermassive black hole is going to be in this globular cluster or if it's going to be somewhere else. Now I'm gonna take a chance and jump into it and see if I can actually find it using my manual navigation skills here um, and hopefully one day maybe in the future we'll might be able to even visit it in real life. Now interestingly the only other thing we know about this galaxy is that it's approaching Andromeda galaxy at, at the speed of about 200 kilometers per second, while Andromeda galaxy is actually approaching us. So what we still are not sure about is what actually happens to uh, Triangulum galaxy in the future. There's several possibilities. One of them is, of course, joining with uh, Andromeda and the Milky Way. But it's also kind of possible that this galaxy might might be actually thrown away out of um, the local cluster because of the interaction with the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy. It's somewhat possible that it actually might disappear completely, or well, not disappear completely, but get thrown out into the outer uh, clusters and possibly join some, some other galaxies somewhere else. Now, I'm very, very close to discovering the supermassive black hole, and I know it's going to uncover itself any second now, because that's usually how this works in this game. So we're going to come really, really close to the location where it possibly is located, and maybe accelerate time a little bit just to see if any of these stars here start acting a little bit unusual. And look at that, here you go. There is that supermassive black hole with lots and lots of stars moving around it, and this is how you can discover all of these supermassive black holes there. Now, they kind of stopped moving because I made time um, into real time. But if I were to accelerate time again, you would see that they would be spinning around this invisible object somewhere in the middle. And this is how you can locate where that supermassive black hole is. And this is essentially how we located our own supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star. And there it is. You see that one object that's not moving anywhere? That's got to be that supermassive black hole. And in this particular simulation, it's listed as 50,000 masses of our star, the sun. And so let's approach it a little bit closer and take a look at it. And then maybe leave the system, fly away, and go back home to our own planet Earth. And so there you go. There's that supermassive black hole of Triangulum Galaxy. Anyway, let's return home take a look at 
Triangle Galaxy from the outside once again. Give it the last look. Enjoy its beauty. And return to our planet Earth. And so anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video. I just wanted to show you this incredibly beautiful, but I guess less known galaxy known as Triangulum. And I wanted to give you an idea of what we actually know about it. If you want to learn more, there's going to be another video in the future that covers some of the other galaxies and talks more about M33 as well. Anyway, please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with people that enjoy learning through video games and like space stuff and space sciences in general. And come back here tomorrow to learn something else about universe, galaxies, space, math, or maybe even science. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. Let's go back home to Earth. And uh, as always, bye bye. Home sweet home.